Hi, in this tutorial we will continue with the study of deductive databases. What we will now um, concentrate is in the deduction for databases. Um, in the previous tutorial we were adding some facts into the database and we were using Prolog. Why we were using Prolog? Because in deductive databases they use a notation that they call data lock and data lock is a subset of the Prolog language. And that's how they explain the facts and how is that going to I mean it's easy to understand what's going on there. Okay, so um, if we go into this figure, we see that um, here there is a set of facts that we got in the database. And for example, A is, and then here is my set. I mean, this is like different, like looks like cards, like flashcards. Fact A is X. And then here in, in, in my rules, I have something that says if A is X, then B is Y, then we are adding a new fact to the database and this can probably trigger another one and another one and so on. And that's what we call here the inference chain, that maybe this trigger this, this trigger this, and then uh, there is another one that is there and eventually we got like Y and D, did I D, so this three and so on. I mean, because we keep adding facts and then some of the facts may be triggering some rules and rules may be adding additional rules, and additional facts, I'm sorry, that, that we have and then some of the facts becomes actually conclusions and sometimes we're searching for a solution of a problem and that's the approach in artificial intelligence. You're searching for a solution and sometimes when you're adding those facts, one of those facts is actually the solution to a given problem. And um, so it's, it's something that is really interesting. I mean, that you keep searching and making conclusions and from another logical conclusion, you add another one and eventually you find a solution to a problem. And that's a, an approach that we call searching. Okay, so it's really interesting, the idea that we keep adding knowledge there. I mean, we're not modifying the database, but just from those points there, we get additional information. So here is maybe some information that we can have, like, like for example, this is the fact, this is something that we know, that this is a frog, and then there is a rule that all frogs are green, and this is what it was actually stored in the database as a fact. And then we can conclude or we can imply the following. So this is not stored in the database. So it's not, I mean, we can now search is is Hector Green. We, we could not find, I mean, in a traditional database, I mean, you search and then you don't find that. However, if we add additional rules and then we said, oh, because it's a frog, then it's green and we don't need to store that information, okay? So now we're not really concerned right now with uncertainty, I mean, that in this case that, okay, it's a bird, but not all of them fly, then we cannot answer this. That will be something else that uh, we, we're not really, I mean, we can uh, be more specific or using some probabilities to, to go into those details, but we're mainly concerned about things like this that are very deterministic. Um, and um, this, this is something very important because this is related with recursion. That um, in this case, it was a one step uh, way of concluding something because, okay, it is frog, something that we call transitivity. And then frogs are green, then Hector is green. But there may be cases like, okay, Hector is a frog, but look here. Uh, green thing can hide in underground, uh, undergrowth. So, so here we don't cannot conclude that from here in just one step because first one of the conclusions will be using the rules is that okay, uh, Hector is green because it's a frog, and because it's green, that will be an additional thing to conclude. Then we can say this. Oh, this can be that. So for that, we were using recursion. And that's something that we don't have in traditional databases. So again, rules can be used to derive new knowledge over a collection of data that we call facts. I mean, but we know that we call what, what is basically a traditional database. I mean, we got a knowledge that is stored there. Um, and 
in, initially it is in the 70s was using with languages like this or Prolog. We were using that because mainly this was only used for artificial intelligence and one of the applications that I think we discussed already was for uh, expert systems. So um, some of the, archi the, the architecture that we have is we have a user interface and, and again this will be great for the database. I mean that this, this is uh, for like a kind of like an expert system we got a question and answer with your questioning somebody and then uh, you start making some type of inference and then go and search for the the tools the data and you will see what matches why we add an explanation system into an expert system is because sometimes when you are in asking questions to a client or a, or a user a customer they may ask you why why you i mean they, they can reply why you're asking me for this in piece of information like in a criminal case i don't know why you're asking me for this or for a disease or for whatever things i mean it's not as i mean the easy way will be asking questions do you have this do you have that and get a yes or no yes no but from time to time you can get some question and that says why you're asking me this or what was the purpose of that and then I can give you a reasoning of the sequence of what I follow you know what I'm searching with the facts that you gave me I mean this is this is really interesting adding all these extra features on a database and that's the idea okay so again we're not really concerning on applications that are kind of related with an expert system that um um, um, we, we just basically want to build some databases, I mean deductive databases on top of relational database systems, like some of the systems that are listed here. Now, this is, with all the information that we have, maybe we can make a conclusion about this. Why don't normal databases um, just have the deductive part? And I think the main answer is because we don't have recursion in those databases. And then uh, the SQL query or SQL style, we got something like this is selected, but we don't have the recursion. And I think the following example can sort of illustrate that. Like, uh, let's say that typically we got something for, in this case, for public transportation that says, okay, there is a connection from this stop to this stop or from this city to this city in these two minutes. And then you can do, uh, but if you're going to farther, then you keep searching for, you need to be specific that you're looking for one stop, two stops, three stops, but you don't know if the uh, origin and the destination are far away, I don't know, N stops. And it stops, it will mean that I keep searching for num a number of times that I don't know. And the best way to solve that will be using some recursion until I find that. So here, for example, this is, will be something I want to stop. I go from A, I'm going from A to C. So from, I, I find a fact that goes from A to B, and then something that goes from B to C. Then I know I can go from A to C by going to B and then to C, right? This was easy if I'm looking for just one stop. But if I'm going from A to C and I don't know the number of stops, I can say I want you to look for up to five stops or six stops and I want you to give me all the routes if there are any stops. That would be very difficult without recursion. Okay, so, um, and, and, and this is kind of the explanation, why right? if I go in here, I mean, we can play with this data and, and, and see for stops over there. Now, um, here uh, it tells me, I mean, uh, one way that I could do this, and, and, and which is getting all possible connections. This is not a good approach, but this is a way of going around because we don't have the way of doing transitivity or doing some recursion in traditional databases or the standard of SQL 92. There is a new standard SQL 99 that supports recursion that is not implemented on every system, however. So SQL 99 will be able to do some deductive databases. Okay, so 
the approach that we will follow to do some of the examples is that we will test it in the lab using Prolog. Or some people just call it data lock, and data lock is just a little subset of Prolog because Prolog is a complete programming language, and we're not concerned with the whole programming language, just the subset that manipulates the the knowledge and the facts and gets additional data. And um, you're just gonna go into very basic de details. So facts given by single connections, like, like for example, this is what I did in my previous tutorial, lower case for the name of the facts. Now here, um, if I have uppercase, uppercase will be uh, considered variables. So these are variables. So if I'm asking for this, this is in the query system. So I'm looking for, okay, what will be, there is something that goes from this to this place and then the matching the, the variables. But I will go into more detail in, in the example with the system. So, so, so what we will have in a deductive database system, we will say that we have a database. So, so we have everything that we got in a database, but we got something else that is the deductive system that is basic based on recursion and in, in, in an efficient way of searching for the solutions that we will, that we call that bottom up. Um, so this is this is what we will do in the in the following examples. Okay, look at the following example that we got these facts. The bill is the parent of Mary and Mary is the parent of John. Something similar to what I did in the previous tutorial. So we know that Bill is the grandparent of John, but that is not directly uh, stated there. But we can call ancestors, I mean, X is the ancestor of Y. If uh, X is the parent of Y, right? But for example, Bill is also an ancestor of John. And that's what we're gonna be using recursion. Because look, there is an ancestor here. X is an ancestor of Y if there is something in between and this is the part that is the recursion because it says okay and says we call ancestor for x and then we look for z and then it does z is also the ancestor of y then x is the ancestor of y so in this case for example if we go and query with bill we can see that okay there is a z which will be mary and then the mary will be the ancestor of y then we get this possible answer. So the possible answer is, is Bill is the ancestor of Mary, because that matches this rule, and Bill is the ancestor of John. Now, the good thing about this rule, it simplifies everything, is it can be as deep as great-grandfather or great-great-great-great-grandparent. We can find it because of the recursion, because this rule will substitute it by one of these or one of these, and then this is the part that contains recursion. So this is the part that is really good. So it's either the ancestor is because there is a direct connection here on parent, or we keep searching. This is the part and we be searching to say there is a connection from X to Y in which there is a relation. Now, um, I'm exceeding the time for this tutorial. Just something that I want you to read about the history of deductive databases or the world's a lot of systems <coughs> that were very popular and uh, unfortunately since these were targeted initially in the 80s for SPR system it wasn't really a success for more commercial systems as it was the relational database system but I mean we still got some uh, um, standards and other things that were taken from the idea of deductive databases and some databases nowadays and especially in the use of semantic where uh, so we will stop here and we will continue with some exercises on the next tutorial